Change of pace from our normal videos. This is my 1987 Jeep J10 uh, with a AMC 360 motor in it. It's a 5.9. It's a pretty cool truck, pretty special. I found out about these from the movie Twister. Tighten your seatbelt. A lot of people heard about it from Tremor. Twister was the first time I saw a, a Jeep truck. I'm like, well, what is that? That's pretty cool. It's not a Ford, it's not a Chevy. I bought one for $500 sight unseen while I was in Afghanistan. Not this one, a different one. It was cool, but it was just way too, too much of a project to get. And this was actually sitting in a field near my parents' house. My wife went by and actually bugged the guy. I saw her pull off, I'm like, oh no, what is she doing? Long story short, he ended up getting it from his brother and I traded a Geo Metro for this truck. And it was my parents' Geo Metro. I didn't even ask their permission. <laughs> I just, I traded their Geo Metro for it and asked for forgiveness later. My best friend uh, helped me work on it a lot, needed a transmission rebuild from sitting forever. And so we put a lot of time and effort into this to get it running um, and it was cool and we were gonna do so many things. And I got plenty of pictures of my kids in the seats with me in here. Um, so it kind of came just a special truck to us being part of, that it's a Jeep and we're a Jeep family. My best friend was killed out in a work accident. And uh, I mean, he was he was my best friend. Like I was with him when his mom passed and they say that blood's thicker than water. They obviously haven't had a best friend like that. So uh, anyhow, when he passed, it became difficult to work on this just because it made me sad. And then I came on hard times and needed some money. So I sold it to a guy locally. I regretted selling it the instant that it happened, but it's something I had to do at that time. After a friend of mine that I served with here was actually filming this, told me about how he got one of his special cars back that he had to sell, kind of a similar situation, he needed the money. He reached out to the guy and after a long time of talking with him, he got the car back. I was inspired to do the same thing. So I reached out to the guy that I sold this to. Over a year of reaching out to him, he reached out and said, hey, I'm moving across the country and I can't take this with me. Do you want to buy it back? And I left at the opportunity. I, I <laughs> big borrowed, did everything I could to get the money to buy this back and traveled all the way back to, to Oregon um, and bought this back after not having it for years. So I finally got my truck back. My goal now though is let's get it up and running. And if we can today, the goal of this video, get new tires and wheels on it. I picked up off of Facebook for cheap. See if we can't get this running, then get it down to the DMV and get it registered. The truck is lovingly called Walt. When we first got this truck, we opened up the little glove box and it had the original registration from where it was bought in Illinois. And it was to a man named Walter. And we thought, what a perfect old man truck name. Walt here has had many tires. These came on first. They don't like to hold air. These came on, as you can see, they don't like to hold air. I bought these cheap afterwards. like to get rid of these because I'm not a huge fan of the giant chrome. So we got new wheels. We're gonna put some heat in the gas tank. This fuel has been in there for God knows how long. And I don't even know how much fuel is in it. We're gonna address that. Um, it's got weird quirks with the doors. We're not gonna worry about that. The goal today is to get it running if we can under its own power. Come in here underneath the hood. Got the nice 360 in here. Accelerator seems to be a bit stuck. Doesn't really wanna move. So we're gonna use some carb cleaner and see if we can't get that motivated a little bit and then a fresh battery and just start from there and see where we end up at. The motor here is pretty cool. It's an AMC 360. Uh, these came with a few different engine options. This particular one actually has headers and it was straight piped back when I had it. The person after me put a muffler on it probably because they thought it was too loud. Lame. And I got it running, it was running fine. I used to drive it every Sunday to go get burritos. Headman headers, back to three inch pipes going back. It's a pretty basic motor with the 360 though. It's a medium block. Um, it shouldn't be too hard if I want to, to make this a 390 or a 401 by changing out a few things, which would be kind of cool. And depending on how well this goes, I might do a full teardown just because I think that this could use some proper TLC. The wheels that I picked up came off of a newer Chevy Silverado, not like super new. Um, I had the guy measure out the center bore and it should fit over these. As I'm gonna pour in some heat for you, those of you who are unfamiliar, it takes care of a lot of the water in here. I know the gas that went in here had some ethanol in it. Ethanol likes to attract water and stuff. Uh, so this will help evaporate some of that water out and hopefully help to start a little bit easier when we get that going. So I'm gonna put the heat in first so it has a chance to kind of mix around uh, with the fuel that's in there and give it a better chance of starting up in a minute. Then we're gonna to go to the tires, get that all on just so the heat has some more opportunity. We'll swap the battery and then we'll see if it starts up.
That didn't sound good, Jonathan. Anyhow. That on do do Now we can move on to seeing if we can fire it up. We know the battery is bad. Um, it's a couple years old. It's been sitting here, so I got a new battery already. We're gonna throw in there, and. Once we get the new battery in, I'm just gonna try starting it and seeing what happens, but we gotta get the solar out first. Sweet, old battery. This so, one. Group size 24, not even the right group size. Not that I think that makes a huge difference for this, but it's all right. So it fired up and it wants to run. It's struggling to idle. So I'm going to take a look at the carb now, take out the air cleaner, spray some carb cleaner in it. They did the old school modification of flipping this over for more air, which doesn't do anything. And that doesn't help either. So I don't know if you guys can see in there, these are completely closed. Um, because he has none of the vacuums to open this up um, for when it's trying to um, choke itself essentially. Uh, an older carburetor engine that had to do that. I mean, this is not the factory one. He's installed a Holly, which I have a whole box full of parts. This had an Edelbrock performer intake or a carburetor on it and an intake manifold. Um, doesn't look like he's running that intake manifold on here, which sucks. And I don't think he gave it back to me, which sucks. Kind of get it everywhere. Hopefully not in my mouth just in case there's some old gunk or anything in there. And then I'm gonna run it with the air cleaner off. But I'm gonna give that a moment to kind of evaporate. Um, if you don't do that, sometimes you see where it will backfire. Um, and I'm not really interested in an engine fire right now, if I can help it. I had oil pressure for those of you wondering why I didn't check the oil. I just wanted to see if it would turn over. Um, I know that it has oil and it hasn't been leaking oil. There's no place I've parked it where it's had oil leaking out. Um, it does have pressure. This <laughs> this one's wrong. It says it's constantly 80 even just sitting here. So what's kind of impressive is this has sat for many years. Like we've actually tried to fire it up by jumping and stuff and it just couldn't stay running. I think a little bit of carb cleaner helped clean out some of the corrosion. And I really feel like the heat that I put in the gas tank and let that go in there might have fixed a lot of the water vapor that was in it, causing a lot of problems. But what's super impressive with these old vehicles, not running for many, many years, and just a little bit of love and it fired right up without a problem. It's idling great. Maybe a little bit high of an idle. I have no tack to know, but just listening to it sounds a little bit higher than I'd probably like it to. Uh, it's an automatic, so I'm guessing 500 RPMs, maybe a little bit more than, should be good. Uh, but for right now, I'm actually gonna see if, once it warms up a little bit and get the transmission, give it a chance, I'll try sitting and run through the gears, and then we'll see if we can get it to go a little bit. But I'm pretty excited. I mean, that, that I was expecting a lot more work. Dude, I'm 
I'm so stoked about this. Like, forget the wasps. I'm jazzed. Like, this is gonna be great. burning off everything you can smell it's so bad but ran good i mean it's going to take a little bit the brakes definitely need to have some adjustment done to them um, but it felt great i haven't driven it on the road road in many many years i think i'm gonna go get some fuel in it there's a gas station not too far that has ethanol free fuel and since this is an old carbureted engine they don't like ethanol as well and so i'll treat it to a little bit of premium all right, all right. fire right up just boom done all right, now let's see if we can get some fuel. If we can make it there. It's just cool to be driving around in it. Like it's, it hasn't been driven in so long, but it still drives awesome. Like you couldn't do that with newer cars. Like you leave it sitting that long and engine code and oh, my computers and all this other crap. Like, no, not in this. Cool. But what do you guys think? You let me know. Should I repaint the whole thing? Should I just clear coat over and keep the patina the way that it is? I mean, what would you guys like to see? If this was your truck, what would you do? There's only one way to cool it off, man. You gotta go fast. So my son has never seen this truck drive. My oldest has been in this truck, and I think my youngest might have been too, but um, it'd be the first time they've seen it drive in a while. Up in the truck. really make the neighbors happy <laughs> so in the next video we're going to go through the box of parts we have figure out what's there determine kind of what we could do but also get this to the DMV and getting it registered so I can drive it legally on the road without too much problems it's definitely gonna be in the next video uh, but there's so much to do it's gonna be hard to know what to tackle next until we know exactly where we're at so DMV go through the box of parts that came with it and then a shakedown and see if we can't figure out some of the easy low hanging fruit. So stay tuned next time as we take Walt back out 